Hi, and welcome to lesson 7 on waveguides. In previous lessons, we have talked about how to produce light, whether incoherent or coherent, and then we talked about some properties of uh, coherent light and single photons. Now we're going to learn how to make waveguides and what are their basic properties. Step 1, introduction. So let's talk about some of the limitations of uh, unguided light. Uh, one, one of the properties of uh, light is that it travels very fast, which is actually good, because uh, if we encode our message into light, then it means that our message will get to the uh, intended recipient fast. Also, uh, light is fairly unaffected by noise, particularly if it travels in uh, fibers. Uh, you can pack many fibers together and they will not be affected by each other's presence. Whereas when you compare it to, for example, copper cables and transmitting electrical signals, then even the presence of other cables may interfere with your message. Also, light is now relatively easy to produce, but light travels in straight lines, which might sound like a good idea at first, but we will see that actually it's quite limiting in terms of how far we can communicate. So let's consider uh, light traveling in, in uh, straight lines. First, of course, there might be some obstacles between the sender and the recipient. So immediately, you, uh, this will make uh, it impossible to reach your recipient. Then it's also actually limited to very short range, either because of the first reason that you eventually will hit an obstacle, but also for the fundamental reason that uh, Earth is curved. So let's do some very quick math. Imagine that this is the surface of the Earth, and the curvature, of course, is uh, very much exaggerated here. And let's say that we've got two Mount Everests. So that's the highest point uh, on Earth, and it has a height of uh, just over 8.8 .8 kilometers. And let's say that on this Mount Everest, you place right at the top, you place uh, a, a light source, and you are trying to send it to a recipient that's standing on top of the other Mount Everest. So how far can this uh, uh, light travel in a straight line? Well, with some basic trigonometry, actually the distance between Mount Everest 1 and 2 is just 672 kilometers. So even though it seems like we are very far above uh, the Earth's surface, we cannot really send the light signal that far. And this is discounting any attenuation coming from the atmosphere. So being able to guide or steer light seems like a very good idea for long-distance communication. So let's see how it all began. We can say that it began with John Tyndall's experiment in 1870. What he did was he took a big bucket, filled it with water, and he created a small hole on one side of the bucket at the bottom. And what he noticed was that uh, sunlight that was uh, going into the water was also exiting through this uh, opening in the bucket. But not only that, to his surprise, the sunlight followed the trail that was being taken by the water itself. So the sun, sun rays did not just exit uh, the water bucket in a straight line, but they were being guided by the water itself. So this was the one of the first examples of actual uh, uh, fiber, where light was being reflected inside the fiber and guided and not traveling just in a straight line. So here's a brief historical outline of uh, the journey that fiber optics have taken. So it all began with, in 1870 with uh, John Tyndall's experiment, and people were slowly um, um, investigating fiber optics and how to guide light, particularly in, in glass. But it was only really in 1960, with the invention of laser, when people truly uh, realized the potential of um, using laser light coupled to fiber optics. So they spent a lot of effort in researching how to do that. And in 1966, uh, we, uh, people managed to couple lasers with fiber optics. And this really sparked the first uh, information revolution. Just to give you some idea how far we've come, in 1970, it was possible to transmit about 1% of the uh, original light over a distance of one kilometer. 
meaning that if you put in light of some power at the beginning, after one kilometer, you only had one hundredth of the original signal. Twenty years later, in 1990, it was possible to transmit 96% of the original power over the same distance of one kilometer. And where are we now in 2021? Well, let's have a look at the map of uh, uh, submarine uh, fiber optic cables. So you can see how many, many cables there are connecting the continents across the Pacific, across the Atlantic, also uh, going from different continents to other continents like this. And this is only the map of the submarine cables. There's a lot more cables going over land. So truly, the fiber optic network is the nervous system of mankind, allowing us to communicate within milliseconds from one side of the Earth, Earth to the other. So let's have a quick outline uh, of what we're going to talk about in this lesson. First, we're going to begin with uh, two basic phenomena of how light behaves when it hits the interface of two materials. We're going to talk about reflection and refraction. These two are crucial for understanding how fiber optics works. And then we're going to talk about total internal reflection, where we're going to combine reflection and refraction and uh, derive the condition for total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is what we have seen in Tyndall's experiment, where light was not uh, escaping the water stream, but it was being reflected and guided by the water stream. And then we will conclude by some basics of uh, fiber optic cables, in particular how they are constructed and what are the differences between various types of fiber optic cables.